And I know there's a Chief Justice, and you have judges, and you have magistrates, and you have a higher and lower court, and um, court of appeal. And the judicial system is, 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 is there in order for, it is like a, a it is the legal framework of, of, of the government, of, of, of the society of Trinidad and Tobago. And they are supposed to be like the referee between man and the state. The judicial system currently is flawed. Backlogs, um, cases being thrown out, it's not really perfect, but no system is utterly perfect. Well, as far as I know, the judicial system is supposed to be administrating justice to the people, making sure the laws are you know, administered in the right way. The Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago provides for three branches of the state, which are the executive, the parliament, and the judiciary. The Constitution provides for a Supreme Court. There shall be a Supreme Court of Judicature for Trinidad and Tobago, consisting of a High Court of Justice and a Court of Appeal with such jurisdiction and powers as are conferred on those courts respectively by this constitution or any other law. In Trinidad and Tobago, the Supreme Court of Judicature comprises the High Court of Justice and the Court of Appeal. Both the High Court and the Court of Appeal consist of the Chief Justice and a number of judges as provided for by law. The Chief Justice is the President of the Court of Appeal but may preside in the High Court at any time. Judges in the Court of Appeal are called Justices of Appeal. Those in the High Court carry the title Justice. The Chief Justice is appointed by the President after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Other judges are appointed by the President acting in accordance with the advice of the Judicial and Legal Service Commission. The independence of the judiciary is secured by the method of appointment of judges and their security of tenure. The independence of the judiciary is ensured by method of appointment and security of tenure. In other words, there is no political input in the appointment of judges generally. I say generally because the case of the Chief Justice is different. But judges are appointed by the judicial and legal, well, they're appointed by the president, but the president acting in accordance with the advice of the judicial and legal commission. And therefore they are not, and certainly ought not to be, subject to political manipulation. When people deal with the courts on a day-to-day -day system, on a day-to-day -day basis, sorry, and they unhappy because they have to wait hours or the cases take years and they ask questions. They don't blame the executive. It's the judiciary that suffers the criticism because why it is they have so many cases, why is it the cases taking so long, why is it you know that these delays are happening. At the end of the day, um, the question of the independence of the judiciary is largely dependent on a question of its resources. And if one accepts a key to the whole process of one's independence, whether it be judiciary or other institutions, because the judiciary is but one of the independent institutions within the Constitution, Integrity Commission as well as the DPP are other two institutions which for their success and their credibility require their independence. Um, the question of resourcing becomes important because if at the end of the day the persons who have to sit in judgment of you have to then depend on you to give them money to be able for them to carry out their own day-to-day um, -day needs and activities then it raises concerns. Who comprises the Judicial and Legal Service Commission? The Judicial and Legal Service Commission consists of the Chief Justice's Chairman, the Chairman of the Public Service Commission and other members appointed by the President after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. These appointments consist of one judge or retired judge and two experienced lawyers, one of whom is not in active practice. Who is responsible for appointing and removing judges? The Judicial and Legal Service Commission 
has the power to appoint judicial officers to hold or act in offices, promote, transfer, remove and also exercise disciplinary control over judicial officers. The Commission must consult the Prime Minister before making appointments to the offices of Solicitor General, Chief Parliamentary Counsel, Director of Public Prosecutions, Registrar General and Chief State Solicitor. Under what conditions can the Chief Justice or other judges be removed from office? For the Chief Justice or any other judge to be removed from office, a Judicial Committee must advise the President to remove the judge. However, before a case for removal is referred to the Judicial Committee, the President, acting on the request of either the Prime Minister in the case of the Chief Justice or the Judicial and Legal Service Commission in the case of other judges, must appoint a tribunal to investigate the facts. The tribunal investigates the matter and reports to the President, recommending whether or not the question of removal of the judge be referred to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. Too many of the judges are appointed by the people who are in power. So therefore, the judicial system can be manipulated by the people who are in power. Well, I would believe like many other countries, uh, any judicial system could not be 100% independent because you have the human element. Well, it should be, but I don't think it is because they, 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 bo they both go hand in hand. Yes, there is a, to me, there is a lot of independence. And we've seen this in many instances whereby the court, the judicial system has acted independent of the, the government. Judges vacate office at the age of 65. If required, judges may be given a period after age 65 to deliver a judgment or do anything else in respect of proceedings that were being heard by them prior to retirement. The salaries and allowances of judges are a charge on the consolidated fund and together with their other terms of service cannot be altered to their disadvantage once they are appointed. Democracy means freedom of worship for all and the subordination of the rights of any one race to the overriding right of the human race. Democracy means freedom of expression and assembly and organization. All that is democracy. All that is our democracy. This is what I meant when I gave the nation as its slogan for all time, discipline, production, tolerance. The Constitution creates the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. There shall be a Director of Public Prosecutions for Trinidad and Tobago, whose office shall be a public office. The Director of Public Prosecutions shall have power in any case in which he considers it proper to do so. The Director of Public Prosecutions is appointed by the Judicial and Legal Services Commission in consultation with the Prime Minister. A person may not be appointed to that office if the Prime Minister objects. What are the duties of the Director of Public Prosecutions? There can be no question about whether or not someone may be politically prosecuted and that is why the framers of the Constitution just felt it absolutely critical that the office of the DPP should be one that should be an independent office and it, it stipulated that in section 90 of the Constitution. Of course, what it says very bluntly is that any question of initiation of charges or powers to discontinue lies solely within the powers of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Equally, there is also section 76, I believe it is, of the Constitution which talks about the Attorney General being the officer who is to deal with all matters of the state in relation to legal proceedings. So it is a question of balancing off those two competing sections within the Constitution and trying to figure out how well they can work with each other. In my view, it, it seems on the face of it rather clear that one relates to the ability to initiate charges, etc., whereas the powers of the Attorney General will be um, circum around that, if I could put it that. But there is certainly, um, on the face of it, 
no room for anyone else to be able to assert a power to initiate charges, etc., against any citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. The Director of Public Prosecutions may institute and undertake criminal proceedings against any person. He or she may take over and continue any such proceedings that have been begun by someone else and may discontinue proceedings at any time before judgment. What is the role of the Director of Public Prosecutions? You should have a Director of Public Prosecutions who is completely independent. There's criminal prosecutions involved of the political legal framework in the political sense, which is the Minister of Legal Affairs. As against the old thing of the Attorney General, which was the Constitution we had in 62, who was responsible for all these matters in the constitution stating that he is uh, he acts in his own discretion what you have done now is to put a, a DPP within the department of the attorney general but he accepts responsibility for the prosecution but he comes under the attorney general whilst you still leave untouched one of the difficult questions of an attorney general who acts on his own so he can't ultimately act on his own because the Prime Minister could always fire him. But the role of the DPP is with respect to criminal prosecutions, either instituting them or bringing them to a close. His, he is intended to act completely independently. There should be no pressures brought to bear on him. It's an academic question whether his independence is subject to the overall power of the Attorney General. The way the Constitution is drafted, his powers are subject to the power of the Attorney General. In practice, however, it really means that the DPP is in fact independent. The judicial system right now is struggling because it's overworked and overburdened right now. We don't have enough judges to administer and at times it seems as though justice is not being served because we don't have sufficient judges. As far as I'm concerned, the role of the judicial system is to ensure that all laws are passed by government and they uphold the law and defend the constitution. Basically, the judicial system, I can say, consists of the magistrate and um, the Supreme Court. Um, they pass laws, they uphold the laws kind of thing. The Supreme Court comprises the High Court of Justice and a Court of Appeal. The Chief Justice is the President of the Court of Appeal and may preside in the High Court. The Chief Justice is appointed by the President after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Judges are appointed by the President acting on the advice of the Judicial and Legal Service Commission. The Judicial and Legal Service Commission consists of the Chief Justice as Chairman, the Chairman of the Public Service Commission, and other members appointed by the President after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. The Judicial and Legal Service Commission has the power to appoint, promote, transfer, remove, and discipline judicial officers. The Director of Public Prosecutions is a public officer appointed by the Judicial and Legal Service Commission in consultation with the Prime Minister. The Director of Public Prosecutions undertakes criminal proceedings against any persons. Democracy means more, much more, than the right to vote and one vote for every man and every woman of the prescribed age. Democracy means recognition of the rights of others. Democracy means the equality of all in the eyes of the law. Democracy means equality of opportunity for all in education, in the public service, and in private employment. I repeat, and in private employment. Democracy means the protection of the weak against the strong. Democracy means the obligation of the minority to recognize the right of the majority. Democracy means responsibility of the government to its citizens. 
the protection of the citizens from the act.